What's up everybody? I'm Morgan Crosby. Welcome to Cars and Crosby. I've got an update video for you. We have been working on getting my Corvette ready for the 21 driving season and I'm finally having some things to show you in terms of progress. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the industry and then also some things that are coming through the pipes at my dealership as well. Stay tuned. This is going to be a Corvette themed episode. All right, let's get right into it and talk about the first upgrade. I just picked up my Corvette from Scotty's Shine Shop. And as you can see, the entire front end of the Corvette has now got the wrap on it to replicate what on the convertibles you can do as an option. This does not have nacelles, so we wrapped it in our own custom wrap. Uh, this is all done freehand, and it was made to kind of match the line that's on the Corvette there. Um, kind of similar to what you see on the convertible. I really am a fan of uh, when the top end of a Corvette is uh, covered in a carbon flash metallic finish. It's very similar to what you see on a lot of European exotic vehicles, the Ferrari. Um, if you Google 599 GTO, that would be a good example of uh, an Italian supercar that's really pulled off that top end uh, being in a different color. And if you really take a look at the back here, there's also another really cool thing that the guys pointed out when they were wrapping it. Here on the deck lid, I've got the Stingray logo. And if you look here, these designs are very similar to what we now have on the back of my C8. So it's kind of almost like it was meant to be. It really is cool how um, the logo on this kind of very similarly matches um, the lines that we've wrapped this Corvette in. Now, it was very difficult to choose a line to, to work with. We chose to run with the window line here, and I think that that was the best decision, especially when you look at it from the back end. On the front end here, we did put paint protection down first and on the hood to make sure that when I'm driving and life comes at you uh, in the form of a stone or something like that, that I'm not going to have this vinyl be perforated and then have a starry sky of white that comes out from underneath it. If you know that obviously my paint is the ceramic matrix gray and if you had just a thin 0.8 of a millimeter of the vinyl on here and there was a stone to glance at, it would um, definitely make a uh, impression in there and maybe even leave a white little mark uh, from where it exposed the vinyl and so by putting the paint protection on the top part and on the a pillars is a way that we're hoping will protect this corvette from all the things that i'm going to be throwing at it because as you guys know this is not a garage queen this thing is going to be driven if you're a client of mine and you are doing a design session you're entitled to one of these test drives with my corvette as long as we have a safe condition to do so with uh the pandemic rules that are going on so we have a serious amount of paint protection put on here. The vinyl is about 0.8 of a millimeter thick and then we have about a millimeter uh, with the paint protection. So we've got almost um, two millimeters of thickness and wrap here and that's hopefully gonna be able to keep a lot of the things off of there and making that white that's underneath there not uh, get damaged. I am very concerned as well that if I don't put this top in properly that there will be a chance that you could get your Corvette top to chip here. I had it happen on mine, I didn't really wanna bring it up to you guys because um, it's not one of those positive things that I always want to promote but I want to make sure that I can pass it along to you guys so that it doesn't happen to you. I'm going to show you guys now what happened on my C8 Corvette and if this has happened to you guys please point it out in the comments section because I want to see if I was just the only person that had this happen. When I had my top in the back here apparently it came undone in the back here and these parts right here on the deck lid um, chipped away at the paint and I actually had to go get my Corvette uh, painted because I didn't want to wrap it before we got those little chips fixed and so I'm very concerned that if this happens again in the future that it's going to come through all this PPF that I just did on here so I more importantly just want to point out that you guys should make sure that your top is in there properly um, as an experienced Corvette person um, I find it very difficult to believe that I did this on my own but I'm not going to argue and I'm just going to get it fixed up uh, and I did that before we wrap the vehicle so uh, I hope that that gives you guys at least a healthy heads up that if you're doing uh, driving with your top off in the back that there may be a chance that it can chip and um, make sure that you uh, look out for when your top is in the back and making sure that it's placed in there properly so that you don't make the same mistake I did. Now on to the next component of this. Uh, I'm very excited to see what this is going to look like with my new shoes that are going on the Corvette. I did finally bite the bullet and get a set of Vossen rims. Um, 
I did a little bit of research and uh, the hybrid forge series that Vossen has, which is a step below the forge series, in my opinion, is the cost effective solution. Uh, I didn't really feel like paying 10% of the value of my Corvette in rims upgrades. Uh, it is a significant cost. I do plan on getting the 70th anniversary and I didn't really think that that was something that I was too enthusiastic about. Now, um, Another thing to note is that when I did upgrade my rims to the Vossen, I went with a bigger size. I went with a 9-inch in the front with a 20, and then I did a 12-inch in the back with a 21. And that's on a 245 30 20 and then I have in the back a 315 25 21 so that's the tire size that I went with and I'm hoping that maybe I could even use those on the 70th anniversary if it has a wider body and it'll fill it out a little bit better as well or maybe be the same kind of spec as what we will see on the new um wider body version if it does come to the 70th anniversary or the Grand Sport or the E-Ray or whatever they end up calling it. So I'm hoping that I can reuse that investment on another set of rims in the future and not just have it for this Corvette. And I've got now two sets uh, for the summer. I'm going to put a track set on my original Trident spokes. I'm going to have the street spec for the 2021s. And then I've got this for my fall and my winter driving. That way I'm not taking the tires off each time that I want to change uh, for a different type of purpose. It's a perfect kind of application. I'm extremely fortunate that I've been able to have that uh, because if I was constantly taking these tires on and off, not only is that going to be a significant cost, but you're going to jeopardize the sidewalls when you do that every time. It doesn't matter how skilled the individual is that's doing it. So the tires are going to be coming on. There is a bit of a wait right now. I'm thinking that they'll probably be here in and around May. Um, there is about an eight week uh, order process um, i'm going with a standard gloss black just because it's something that they'll have a little bit easier at me being able to get and i already have some friends that can powder coat it and change the color so another helpful tip if you're going to be ordering a set of rims try to get something that they already have pre-built if you're going to change the colors it will most likely be almost the same cost uh, to get it done at the manufacturer as it will at an aftermarket place so if you wanted to save some time and get it ready for the driving season that's what i did is just get the gloss black from the factory instead of waiting and getting a custom color done from voss and, and having it take that much more time. Now, I also got a package today from ACS Composites and they have a new wicker bill extension that's very similar to what we had on a stage three arrow kit on the C7. Um, in my opinion, it's gonna solve a major thing that has stopped me from getting the high wing. I've been very concerned with the high wing uh, as an option on my Corvette because of the functionality that you lose. When you're trying to put stuff in and out of your Corvette, having a high wing is gonna be a very cumbersome task in being able to load stuff up from the back. I, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to show you guys this while I'm holding the camera, but if you think about it, you got a nice big high wing here and you're trying to load stuff into the back of it, you're almost better off loading it from the side and especially if you have the top loading it from the side as well. Um, if you look at what the Z06 is gonna have, it's gonna have more of a thing where it branches off and then it has a higher wing. And so for me, this is almost a stepping stone between this Z51 base spoiler and the new Z06 spoiler. And I'm gonna get Phil to help me in installing this in the second half of this video. So that's another thing that we have coming through the pipes um, that I'm gonna be installing today. And then in terms of Corvette news, unfortunately they did extend the plant shutdown for an additional week. Um, I'm kind of happy that they're doing that in a weird way because Corvette strategy is to be an all or nothing with two shifts. If you think about it, having a Corvette facility facility where they're kind of limping along and they're only producing a certain amount of orders and there's maybe a bunch of people that had their order that was placed that they now can't produce because they don't have the parts it doesn't make any sense it's it's better in my opinion to be able to accept an order and to be building anything that they have throwing at you and to have both of the shifts there so that you can have a full full week of production and instead of just having um one shift on and and them being able to only build a handful of different options so to me it's the best strategy and i'm really happy that they went with that one as in my opinion um, it's all or nothing with a corvette there's no compromises we don't want to make you have to make a sacrifice and this is obviously um, something that they're not enthusiastic about doing they obviously want to be building as many as possible so we're all in this in the same boat i mentioned this in a different video that if you have a buddy down the street that's got a, a limited edition mustang or if you've got a guy that is looking at a 
um, Porsche or something like that. Every manufacturer, it doesn't matter which one it is, is in the same boat in terms of these supply constraints. This is a global issue. So don't think that if you have a Corvette on order that you need to back out and, and invest into another sports car. Everybody's in the same boat. And uh, given the nature of what's been going on for almost a year now, it, it does come to no surprise that there is going to be some issues that come about. And we just got to be patient and hope that there are better days in the future. In terms of other upgrades on my Corvette, I am very enthusiastic about getting um, some aero kits put on my Corvette. I'm still waiting to see a couple of options. And one of the biggest things that I am holding out for is an option where you do not have to drill into the side of the Corvette. If you looked at the uh, standard option uh, 5VM or just the regular carbon flash aero package from General Motors, they have to drill about an inch and a half hole into the side of the Corvette there. And that's something that I'm not very enthusiastic about doing to my Corvette, especially if I do end up selling it and the individual that wants to purchase it for me doesn't want that on there. It may not be something that always goes on my Corvette or maybe there's a different one that I want to do. And I would hate to have a huge honk and hole on each side of my Corvette because I went with the first option that came out. I'm sure that there will be some better options in the future and if you do have any that are not drilling into the sides please let me know in the comment section as I'm very serious about adding that to my Corvette before the 21 driving season starts up so we're gonna go see Phil uh, we've got some delays in the Corvette facility I do have a red mist metallic that's still on its way up so I will be shooting it as soon as it arrives I've got a lot of Corvettes that are actually down there at the facility um, Still haven't seen any progress on that but hopefully there will be some updates on that soon and uh, yeah stay tuned for the next segment So my Corvette is in the shop. We've had it getting warm in here because we don't want to be putting on any of this stuff when it's negative seven outside. The body of the vet, when it gets inside here, will start to condense and there'll be some moisture uh, from the temperature change. And if you look inside this beautiful ACS composite box that we have, on these winglets, there is two-sided pull tape. And um, you really don't want to be putting that on unless you have it up to temperature. So fill it right now is just finished drilling some pre uh some pre-cut holes in the riveting holes here and then we've got a rivet gun which are really easy to find online um it's a pretty cool process to be able to rivet in one of these things so there's double protection in terms of being able to make sure that this is staying on here the base z51 spoiler has 400 pounds of downforce it is going to decrease your top speed um, this is going to definitely increase the amount of downforce, but the functionality out of my Corvette will still be there, which is exactly why I think that this is a great option. So it's going to go on like that. And as you can see, I still have all this area right here where I'm not going to have to worry about going over a big aggressive high wing. So that to me is a really great look and it's in the carbon flash metallic, which is all accented on my Corvette already. It's a made in Canada product, which I really love to support as well. And there you go. <laughs> I could not be happier. This process was so intuitive. It was extremely easy to put this on. Phil was done it in about four minutes. It took longer for us to warm the Corvette uh, than it did to apply this entire uh, process. The riveting sounds a lot more gruesome than it is. It's a very clean process. And that two-sided tape that's on there just gives me extra, extra comfort in knowing that it's on there nice and snug. There's not gonna be a little gap that'll wiggle over time. It just, to me, looks absolutely amazing. And you can finally see the final product of what my Corvette is gonna start looking like. We still have the 
rims that are coming and the rocker panels to do but i have the top now black wrapped in the carbon flash metallic i've got my new spoiler which as you can see has a lot of functionality still if i open up the trunk here you'll be able to see that i can still easily get stuff in and out i wanted to make sure that i'm not sacrificing the functionality of this and i feel like the high wing in my opinion is a little bit overkill there's some people that may disagree with me but this is my my corvette and this is what i decided to do i've got a beautiful canadian product on there that matches perfectly the carbon flash metallic from the factory got a little bit more downforce and then how cool is that i've made it look like a stingray with these nacelles being covered up in that cool wrap as well so there's lots of cool things that are coming about i am excited to see some of you guys in the states i am planning on going down to prompt nevada to the ron fellows driving academy to do my c8 uh, driving school hopefully that will still go ahead as according to plan uh, i um I'm optimistic that I'm going to be able to go in the fall. Mike Furman does a class in October and I was hoping to attend his class as he's a wealth of knowledge and it's great to be able to talk to somebody that's been in the Corvette world for so long and have uh, you know a wealth of information to pass along. I am also looking at trying to go to Michigan for the uh, North American International Auto Show uh, which they're planning on holding in the fall. Uh, other than that I, I really don't uh, want to get too many things on my plate as I don't want to be let down but I am optimistic. I'm also optimistic that the plant is going to be back up and running full steam getting us a, a huge amount of corvettes ready for the 21 driving season i hope you guys enjoy this content so far if you do have some questions about something that you want to put on your corvette i'm all ears i may already know the answer or i'll help you do the research because i want to make sure that i can answer any questions related to corvettes especially if you're canuck so if you guys have some questions don't hesitate to call in or write me an email or put a comment in the section below i hope you enjoyed this video and happy motoring